Hello, this is Steve Tobias with NearFX, and we're going to talk about geobodies today. Paleoscan, it's pretty easy to make them. You select the top and base of a sequence of interest, change the color bar so that the high amplitude geobody you want to describe is highlighted, select that layer, and say, pull out the geobodies for me, would you? And there you go. You get that geobody pulled out of the data. If you then highlight the geobody, you can go into a pretty useful tool, get rid of its smaller brothers and sisters, bring up a horizon stack, and voila, there is your geobody. Uh, in this particular case, it's pretty interesting because the down dip limit of that geobody sure seems to be associated with the same contour line, uh, and that's time. So in depth, it would probably be even more exact. Uh, you can note you do have some uh, acquisition noise, which we probably need to address uh, uh, earlier and didn't. But uh, the bottom line is it's pretty easy. However, if for those that checked last week on the tip of the week, you saw that um, spectral decomposition brings out a lot more data than simple amplitude. So today's tip of the week is how do we create geobodies in PaleoScan from three channel spec decomp cross plots. The reason why this is so important can be seen once we look again at one of the animations from last week. Here I'm going to bring the horizon stack up through this sequence and as we do you can see there's quite a bit of color variation in that sequence and that color variation is not a function of how bright the bright spot is, but it's a function of the signature of the different facies. If we can capture the signature of each facies and create geobo geobodies tied to those signatures, we can do a lot more stratigraphic mapping than we otherwise could. And this is important because of the end game. And the end game is to characterize the facies as well as possible and not just the high amplitude bright spots that's the easy part and so the way to do that is use the full toolkit uh, in a horizon stack centric workflow delineate different geo bodies eliminate uh, overlap and smaller uh, noisy bodies and come up with a final result that's fit for purpose which when compared to the original input input is really quite a bit improved so how do you start? Well, the first step is to uh, pick out the facies that you want to uh, want to describe, which is the one we started with. Here I'm only looking at one of the components, uh, and this is the component of one of the three channels that we're using. Uh, the three channels that comprise the spectral decomposition of this are specified by a cross plot in 3D space. Now it's a 2D plot and uh, Y axis is uh, 25 Hertz and the X axis is 9 Hertz but the colors represent the value of the third axis and we're going to come back to this in a little bit. So the first step is to go ahead and specify where is the geobody and once again, we come up with a cloud of data that we need to then uh, define properly. Here is the same plot in color. One of the thir first things to notice is that that small little facies, which is a small, oh, a small percentage of that entire area we're looking at, covers, golly, a whole big area over here. And there's a way to make life a little easier when you're picking classifications from which to construct geobodies. And that way is real simple. You go ahead and you simply replot everything in log log space. So here we're looking at uh, 25 hertz over here, and 9 hertz over here, and 37 hertz are the colors. Once we do that, we see that we're getting uh, a tighter tighter zone over here, and th and that's good for another reason. In constructing these cross plots, there's a lot of data decimation decimation you just get more robust results if you compress as much as possible and so tip number one is to reformat the plot to natural log scale so the next step is to 
create a classification for this geo body or this facies. And here I started with a circle, which I will then modify and interactively go from the circle over here uh, to see how much yellow there is and get to a point at which, uh, which I'm happy. And uh, as always, it's good to build on previous work. And here I'll always refer back to the shape of the geo body that was based entirely on amplitude information and not at all on spectral decomposition information. That looks pretty good. It's now time to start working on the second area. Uh, and I kind of arbitrarily chosen this one. It's very blue. It's obviously different facies. It's fault separated. And uh, so what I do is I draw a polygon around it and I come up with uh, the data points and cross plot space associated with that polygon. And I'm pretty satisfied here because this is very separate from uh, the first one. As you can see, this is no longer a circle. Uh, what I've done is I've modified it and optimized it. And so uh, now we're going to go ahead and move to the next step. Well, the next step, as before, is to draw a preliminary classification polygon around the, uh, the zone that seems to correspond with the facies of interest and then see where the color, in this case green, shows up. And sure enough, um, it shows up nicely and I've described much of that facies, but hey, what's going on here? Uh, this is clearly a different color and yet this and this seem to be false positives. Well, one hint of what's going on is, as I've mentioned before, we're describing a two-dimensional polygon in three-dimensional space. And the third dimension of the third part of the spec decomp component has a wide range and maybe, just maybe, the faces we want just extends here or here or here. And maybe if we can restrict that range, we can get rid of these false positives over here. To explain this a little better, let's take a look at uh, the, the original input data over here and where we've selected that class over here. Well, in fact, it's really a three-dimensional plot and we're picking it on two dimensions. And what that means is there just might be a cluster out over here that is better to select. And there's a way to do it. It's important to think in 3D and not 2D when picking classifications for facies geobodies. And so this is exactly what I've done over here. As you can see, I have now constrained the values in the third axis interactively until I got to a point over here that these are the only values, the only part of the cluster that I'm allowing in my facies. And so now you can see over here it's really cleaned up very very nicely and leaving what I wanted to do in the first place which is this particular facies. And when we compare it to what we started with it becomes obvious that you haven't really finished the classification for any particular facies until you've started completing the selection in three dimensions. Well, now let's try to apply lessons learned to the delineation characterization of a third facies, which is distinctly red, uh, outlined on the left. On the right is a cross plot of all the three component data points in that entire horizon slice on the left. And if we uh, tell the machine to show us where on that cross plot, that facies lies, uh, it's right over there. And so once again, I created a uh, set of geobodies from that particular facies signature and got what I wanted and then some. Uh, and so I got rid of the smaller ones, but found out to my chagrin that the geobody I was interested in is just too big. And this brings us to the third tip of the week. It's the inherent pitfall in creating geobodies 
from spectral decomposition data. And the reason is very straightforward. Spec decomp uh, smooths vertically and it smears small geobodies into large ones because there's a lack of vertical resolution. So the question is, how do you in improve the vertical resolution of the spectral decomposition so that this doesn't happen? And the answer to that is to take advantage of one of the new releases in 2019 PaleoScan, which is uh, the use of the Morlet wavelet so that the spec decomp volumes can be created with a continuous wavelet transform and not just the Fourier transform. Here's an example of the same data we've been looking at with a Morlet wavelet decomposition. Now, there's a couple of things to notice here. First of all, you've got a lot of vertical resolution that you just simply didn't have with the Fourier transforms as you saw last week. That's really important. And secondly, even with all that resolution, you've got some very good character. And so this is the third tip of the week. Use Morlet wavelets when you create spec decomp values. Spread out the choice like we talked about last week. And the results will be spectral decomposition that has more frequency resolution and more vertical resolution, which will give you much better results, as we'll see now. Well, let's go back to that facies in the south. Uh, we're looking at a slice a little bit higher than we did before, where the color has shifted a little bit away from the red towards the brown. And let's see what we can do here. And this slide shows the data points in red on the right corresponding with this facies. Uh, one of the things we're going to try to do here is put a little geological input here and say that, you know, uh, even though the colors are slightly different, it sure seems like this might be uh, part of the same facies. Let's see if we can capture them both with the proper delineation of the classification polygon. In fact, with uh, careful manipulation of the classification polygon, I was able to bring out both of those as uh, related faces. Here you can see the results. On the left are the geobodies after some cleanup from the Fourier transform-based spectral decomposition. And on the right is the are the geobodies from the Morlet wavelet. And as you can see, they're quite a bit different. What you're seeing on the right is less bleeding through because of the better resolution. Uh, and this final slide shows really clearly why that is. Here you can see on the right the um, geobody extracted using the wavelet transform, using the Morlet wavelet, and you get much better definition of the geology of this facies and the one we trained on over here. On the left is what happens when you use a Fourier transform. It's not nearly as good. It bleeds through because of a lack of vertical resolution and the results are not terribly usable. Which leads us to the summary. I'd like to thank and acknowledge the excellent discussions uh, I've had with the very many members of the Peleus PaleoScan support team, uh, this week in particular, Fabian Bubazol and Sven Philippe. Creating geobodies in PaleoScan from three component spectral decomposition cross plots is a powerful tool for strate stratigraphers. There are many ways to proceed. Trial and error is essential. And if there's no other lesson you took away from this, it's to play with the software until you get the best results. It's important to, to note that by its very nature, the vertical resolution of spectral decomposition data, it can be poor, and when it is, this will result in geobodies that bleed through the stratigraphy. Faces classification because of this, and especially in the absence of well control, as I've shown here, can be challenging as well. A fusion of geologic and geophysical best practices is essential and an important new component with the 2019 release is the introduction of the Morlet wavelet for continuous wavelet transforms. So this week we've discussed supervised 
uncalibrated geobody creation. Uh, there are many other aspects to this subject, including uh, geobodies that are calibrated to existing well control, and also importantly, supervised and unsupervised neural network approaches. It's a daunting, daunting subject. NeuroFX offers PaleoScan interpretation work for companies looking for quality contractors uh, in everything from international new ventures to Gulf of Mexico field development. Uh, if you'd like to arrange for a lunch and learn, please email me, Steve Tobias, at steve at nearfx.com. And if interested, we can also talk about fit for purpose training. To learn more about our capabilities, please visit our web website at nearfx.com. Thank you for your time.